lights. And friend fights. Friend, <laughs> friend fights. Okay. Hello and welcome to the... Okay, great. Hello and welcome to the Games Only Podcast, episode 198. 198. K.A. Blue Lights, Friend Fights. I'm your host, HP1703. With me, as always, Dr. Gumar. I should go and just make titles for all the videos as opposed to using the games. This video yep. will be called Blue Lights, <laughs> Friend Fights. Blue Lights, Friend Fights. And the man himself, Sunflower4000. Greetings, friends. Hey, a Metal Gear Solid game came out on Tuesday. I haven't played it, and both of you have. Tell me how asinine the story is. Well, you've never played a Metal Gear Solid game before, right? Never, ever, right. ever. Never, ever, He's ever. also never played a Final Fantasy game because he hates a good time. I hate a good time. You just see him out at a party. He's just sitting in the corner. <laughs> hmm. hmm. <laughs> Looks like they're having fun. I abhor all forms of fun. I also want to do the Humpty Dance. <laughs> Oh, you can do the Humpty Hump. Um, right. So, anyway, so, so Metal Monday, Gear Solid 5. Monday I played huh? Ground Zeroes real quick to get that in before Phantom Pain. Um, so I played the both of them. And Ground Zeroes is a um, good an- analog to how Phantom Pain is going to play out and how Phantom Pain is going to work. So I, if anybody is on the fence and they pick that up for the um, Games with Gold, it's a, month, it's, a, yes. it's a very plausible demo. So... They should check that out if they're wondering how Metal Gear Solid 5 is going to work. Um, that being said, I somehow forgot, and I don't know how I forgot, uh, that Metal Gear is into like all the crazy, creepy occult shit sometimes and the weird like biodynamically changed soldiers. Because um, Ground Zeroes didn't have any of that other than like Skullhead guy, um, but he wasn't like oh, an enemy guy. or anything like that. Okay. So... Yeah, I completely forgot about that. And Renee and I, oh, I was playing, but Renee was watching. And there's a scene with the um, the skull, the, the skull forces or the skull soldiers, or something that make their first appearance, and they like come out as zombies, and then they do that crazy like ring shit where they like move real quick all of a sudden. And, and this is things. this is Phantom Pain. This is not. This is, yeah, this is this. this is this is this is Phantom Pain now. That's correct. They start doing like that weird ring shit and it's just creep the hell out of her. And she walked away. I'm like, oh yeah, that's right. There is some really creepy shit in these actual games. So yeah, um, when you say when you said you know how asinine is the story? Well, you're gonna get little elements like that here or there. Um, in general, cell phone vibrating. I don't. I don't think um, this story so far is as crazy or overreaching as the the previous Metal Gear Solid Four. Um, that story was batshit crazy, man. That story was out there, um, but that took place in like the future, um, and it was near the end of their actual story arc. So. Um, they had to keep on like progressing that story specifically and making it more complicated and more um, crazy. This one takes place before the Sonny. You got to turn that off because it's messing with your mic. Um, this what place, the phone. Anybody's phone vibrating? No. Because I'm getting interference and it sounds a lot like. I'm getting phone vibrating. Yeah. Um, Is something better? Well, I don't hear it anymore, so it happens. Right. Um, so, Metal Gear Solid Five: The Phantom Pain takes place in '84. I want to say 1984, which Correct. is a year before the um, the occur the events of the NES game Metal Gear. Um, yes. So it's not like crazy, super futuristic shit, but all the stuff in Metal Gear Solid: The Phantom Pain is like '80s high tech stuff. So you're using things like cassette tapes, but they're like video cassette tapes and like interesting little things like that, you know, spy type of high tech stuff, but from the '80s. So it has a cool little aesthetic to it. Um, and the NES Metal Gear was the first one. Yeah. The, yeah, it would it would be the first one that's made. Yeah. Okay. So this is a. It's not a prequel, is it? It's just before. It's, it's in the it's in the actual storyline. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, Ground Zeroes took place in '75, and then nine years later, '84 is where you are now in Phantom Pain. Yeah. Okay. Um, they they jump around enough with all the Metal Gear games that it's not really fair to say prequel. Um, okay. 
Metal Gear Solid 1 and 2 were in more modern times, and then Metal Gear Solid 3 went to, towards the Cold War Vietnam era. So they really jump around a decent amount between the actual stories. So it's I wouldn't call them prequels at all. Okay. So. so none of it makes sense. Got it. Yeah, everything's made up, and the points don't matter, yes. Um, Perfect. You, you just have to kind of follow the... Um, Follow chron- um, chronology uh, chronologically. And sure. Follow the money. Yeah. So both of you, money. both of you are seasoned Metal Gear players, having played. Sonny, I think, has a little bit up on me because he played the PSP games. I've uh, I've played all the Metal Gears. Yeah, I've okay. played I played all the solids, but I haven't played the PSP games like um, Portable Ops. Right? Is that one of them? Yeah. Um, yeah. Peace Walker is. Yeah, and, and Peace Walker, um, which those play a, a good deal inside this actual storyline because for this you're playing as uh, Big Boss. Big Boss would be the biological father, um, technically, of Solid Snake, who you play in like the the other Metal Gear Solids ones that are more set in modern times. Um, so Peace Walker's big. Right, so it, it goes Snake Eater, that was Metal Gear Solid 3, then Peace Walker... Ground Zeroes, and then Phantom Pain right now for this current storyline. Okay. I think that sounds right. So the Peace, yeah. Walker, the Peace Walker stuff does play heavy in terms of the, the story um, involved in Ground Zeroes, but they do a good job at least attempting to catch you up, just handling the actual cliff notes and those types of things. Okay. So um, out of all the games in terms of actual storyline and continuity, I think this one would be a decent game to, to jump into. Um, okay. So far, it makes it makes the, the most sense um, wow. initially if you did not have any former background of how Metal Gear actually handles and how that storyline works. Um, they do a pretty decent job catching you up, and it's, it's relatively modern in a sense. So for newcomers of the series that are like, well, I don't feel like going back and playing all eight games in the Solid series. Um, this one this is a decent one to say, okay, let's just go ahead and jump on in. Uh, cool. So Sonny, what's the... Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, sorry. How, how much you've played so far, Sonny? Uh, I'd say about ten hours, maybe. Yeah, I only have about like four hours under my belt with it. Yeah. But it's one of those games that you can you can get lost in relatively easily um, just because of the the structure. And I, I think it's similar to, to Peace Walker in style because um, Peace Walker had a bunch of different missions that you can play and you can recruit people in Peace Walker, if I remember. Yes. Um, well, you what, couldn't recruit them in Peace... Well, okay, Peace Walker, yes. I keep thinking you're saying um, Ground Zeroes. <laughs> no, I said... But yeah, yeah, this is really, honestly, a sequel to Peace Walker. Yeah. Like, um, most closely resembles. So that. it has a lot of elements that weren't in Metal Gear Solid 4. Metal Gear Solid 4 is very linear in nature. Do this mission, it's going to actually progress the game. While this one, after like the the first two story areas, the ones one's the prologue and the other one's their first main mission out there in the world, it opens mm-hmm. up a little bit in terms of flexibility of what you can do and what you can't do. Um, and it's very easy to get lost in this game because you are playing as Big Boss, who's rebuilding his um, private military. Um, and so he has to recruit people and do missions for money and get the name out there and all those other things. So there's a lot of extra things you can do. Build an army. Like, they're like, we got to build an army. So you're like, mm-hmm. well, okay. So you start taking people. And you start hiring them, and you start taking supplies, and you start taking guns, and you start taking mortars, and you start taking tanks and jeeps eventually. Just float them all out with a balloon. Uh, yeah, I'm not going to lie. Recruiting people is so comical in this. Um, when you first learn to recruit people, they say, okay, out there in the field, you're going to have to be able to extract these people. You can't go ahead and carry them around the whole mission, so we have a, a Fulton recovery device, which they've used in previous Metal Gears, and it is a historical thing. I just don't think it's very historical for these purposes that they're actually using, in which the Fulton recovery device is essentially a weather balloon with a radio attached to it. So you knock a guy out, you hook a weather balloon up to him, they float there for a minute, and then they just go skyrocketing up into the atmosphere in hopes that a, a plane's going to come and, and pick them up. Yeah. Uh, so you go okay. around, and even en- enemy soldiers, you know, 
you, you, you go ahead and do this to them, and down at the actual base, they'll try and break them and make them come over to our side, or possibly kill them. I don't know. They could kill them if they can't break them. So the whole time you're trying to recruit people, yet still do your mission, and Metal Gear Solid is a, a stealth espionage-style game, so you can go loud and actually go in there and just start shooting people up, but it's much harder, I feel, if you actually do that. It's a lot more interesting if you go around all sneaky. Um, and the first mission, I got the Fulton recovery device. I was like, okay, I'm going to play like I normally play, run around, shoot people with trank darts, knock them out, and like the first guy I knock out, I'm going to fucking go ahead and throw him up there on a balloon. And it's a very loud process when the balloon takes him up because the guy wakes up and starts screaming. So he kind of alerted the other people to my presence, and I had to um, go go weapons weapons hot and deal with it like it's that. Not, it's not a very simple put the balloon on and the guy's just simply gone. Like, you don't have to worry about disposing of the body. They put a little bit in there, you know, to make you work for it. Yeah. So it's not like you can just in the middle of, like, the battlefield be like, nobody's going to notice me putting a balloon on this guy and watching him launch. And so there's always that little piece. But that's... that's I didn't play Peace Walker. And so I didn't experience any of that whole recruiting people or anything like that. So that that's really um, refreshing for the the, the the Metal Gear Solid series in, in general, um, as it's not this heavy linearization of the storyline, and the story can get really really heavy um, really quick in all those other Metal Gear Solid games, especially Metal Gear Solid Four. So it's it's refreshing to be able to do things in and out, and it improves the, the longevity of the game as well. Um, once you play through Metal Gear Solid 4, or you can even watch it, I guarantee you you'll get the same experience out the game if you just watch like the 20 hours of cutscene if you don't want to go back and actually play it. Um, I'm looking at you, HP, because you like to watch people play games, right? Yeah! Because they, ha- they even have, like, in Metal Gear Solid 4, they had a mission that was like an hour, hour and a half long where you're just walking down the street in a trench coat. And it was just like, oh my yeah, you know, Jesus. You know, it was it was like an entire like third episode. Um, so it was it was that dense in awful. that sense. Like this that is like awful. Yeah, it was it was pretty that bad. That literally sounds like a punishment. If it makes you feel better, it was in France. Oh wow. That yeah. that sounds like a double punishment. Yeah. So uh, uh, so tell me what what is the appeal to uh, a me- the Metal Gear franchise. What what can I? What do you get in Metal Gear that you can't get in like uh, Splinter Cell games or other you know spy espionage, sneak and shoot games? Well, it's funny because you, when you mentioned that the story is asinine for the Metal Gear games, sometimes the story is very asinine, but they also Sometimes like, it's also really good. They it's just... really it's it's really good, and sometimes it's really goofy too. So they really like to make fun of themselves sometimes, and you can do some some wild things. Um, I think uh, our friend Chip tweeted out that he got to like a very important cutscene, and I've seen this this hat before. You can have a a hat on, which is pretty much a chicken mascot head with your face sticking out of the chicken's mouth. So he went through like a very serious cutscene with just this goofy hat on the whole time, and they allow little things like that, which is. Interesting to say the least. Um, little little stuff like that. Even the the older ones, they had little hidden jokes here or there. Like um, I think the first one, um, you recruit um, uh, in the first one through the story, you recruit a, a scientist. And if you're like if you like investigate his locker, he's got like a uh, like an anime poster on his locker or something like that, and you can call him up and talk to him about it, and he'll like you know have a little funny conversation based off of that. Hmm. Little interesting interactions from there. It's not as dense sometimes as other things. Other times they they get very philosophical in terms of the nature of war and other ideas like that. But they do take themselves very lightly at, at, at in certain moments. Um, Sonny, what's what's your draw to the Metal Gear? Uh, sometimes when they make a real effort to set the mood, it's pretty much peerless. Um, the first hour of the game is this prologue, which is basically a whole lot of holding up on your analog stick and listening to exposition, because you don't have too much. (laughs) I hate that. I really, really hate that. And after the first hour was done and the prologue was finished, I said to myself, 
I better get all I want out of this one playthrough because I don't ever want to have to do that again. Not because it was terrible, because they were setting the scene, and the first time, it was really cool. I yeah. really liked the mood that they came across. It's, it's a lot better than how they've done previous exposition like that. Absolutely. Um, it was dark in all the right ways. It was intense. They did an incredible job of it. It was a great prologue. I would say it was great. But it's one of those that I just don't want to play again, because it took forever, and it will take forever again. Um, even if you do skip the movies, there's a lot of slowly crawling forwards because, yeah. hey, you're a cripple. You well, you're wake, no you're, not even that. You're waking up out of a coma and your muscles are atrophied. So yeah. you're literally crawling for a while until they start to actually wake up and work. So. Yeah, so that's, that's something. But the supernatural elements were all cool until like near the very end of the prologue where I finally rolled my eyes and I was like, okay, that's too much. Mercifully... That was at the very end. <laughs> yeah. I didn't roll my eyes too quickly before. It you was know. it was pretty funny at the end. There was a there's a fire dude on a flaming horse. I think that's what Sonny's talking about. I was okay there. It was you were right okay with that. That's what you were okay with. I was like okay because it looked really amazing. Like they had a hell of a setting for that. Like I was really psyched mm -hmm. about all of that. But then there was like giant. Um, spirit whale that showed up in eight. Oh, yeah, that's and right. Was like, there was giant spirit whale. I was like, that's weird. And, oh, God. Oh, um, Swoops, if you're watching, by the way, there's horses. Swoops, there's horses in this game. You get to ride a horse in this game. Okay. Yeah, and uh, what that's I like awesome. is, what I really like about the game, though, is that it's one of those open world games that actually feels like anything can happen. Uh, there's other games like that where it's kind of contained in the gameplay, like Battlefield 4 felt like anything could possibly happen as you were playing it. Like, a jet could come screaming out of the sky and wreck into a tank in front of you, and you'll just be like, oh, shoot, in Battlefield. But that was kind of contained in the game. This one just has these crazy things. and You know how I used to talk about Grand Theft Auto 5 and 4 and how, how since it's got an open world and the whole world is actually alive around you, you get your own kind of stories based on how you finish your missions and what you do to actually get done with them and how, how cool that is. Because you, you have your own personal story. on. Oh, and then the sun was coming up as I was making my escape. You know, that sort of thing. It's like that. But it's really a fun game to play. Like, it's just straight up fun to play. There's incentives to go to these bases to earn points, to earn materials. And yeah, it's every fun. every mission has like a main objective, and then a few hidden ones out of there. With you actually manage to do, you you, you get extra uh, extra perks for that. And they and all you, get exposed after you yeah, complete. Them. When you complete the mission, you can you go back? Because I didn't try going back to a mission. Can you replay a mission? Uh, yeah, you can. Okay, cool. So you can always go back and and retry the mission. Um, the only thing, oh, it's it's a pro and con to this, but so everything's broken down into acts, I believe, and then every act has, has a few episodes, and those episodes are the actual missions, um, and they run their own credits every single time a new episode comes, so like when it's like, okay, episode two is, is, is now happening, and it'll show like, starring Snake, and starring... Miller and starring Revolver Ocelot and starring these people and they even do the enemy forces starring Soviet military forces starring yeah. Spetsnav commander um, which okay. is which can sometimes be like a, a pro and a con depending on if you know what that is um, it's a con first, because it's it telegraphed a yeah. important mission that I was doing telegraphed who was going to show up later in it and yeah. that bummed me out because I would have liked it because the first episode was like starring you know also featuring the skull forces and I didn't know what the skull forces were now I do so now when the skull now when I see that on there I'm like oh shit crazy zombie people that have guns coming out their hands and whatnot I gotta watch out for those guys because they're gonna be in this episode somewhere so I guess it does ruin it at some point um, and then they also run credits at the end of every single episode but like quicker credits credits kind of like like everybody loves Raymond credits style where it's really quick they just hit like the highlights and they don't have everybody on the actual everybody on the actual show can um, you skip the intro credits as well or no no, no cuz okay. it's typically done over some yeah of it's it's done over it's, think of it like a TV show like fly out think of a TV show there's actually something happening when they're running all the little names in the corner <laughs> what 
<laughs> it's, it's goofy uh, and weird. It's a rare condition this day and age to read any good news. Well, on there's, a no, newspaper thing, page. there's no thing. So, so think about it like after after the um after after Baba o, like after after, after, Baba, after Baba O'Reilly plays right, and they go through the quick little <laughs> intro, and oh, then okay. they have the credits still kind of rolling while the oh, show is going right. on. It's like okay. that feel, you know. Okay. Ah, oh, man, that's great. Um, so, okay. I, I, I think it's a great game. Um, yeah, I mean, when, when you recruit people, you can tell them, like, where you want them on your base. You can put them in research and development. That way you can research new weapons, new weapon modifications. Um, you can get all the cardboard. Oh, that's another thing they do, Goofy. There's always a cardboard box in this fucking game that Snake hides under, regardless if it's Young Snake, Old you Snake. You have to invent boss. it first. Though. And they had to invent it through R&D. So when they're doing their research and development intro, they're like, Miller told me that this is important to you, and it's very high tech. The people in R and D didn't believe us, but here you go anyway. It's a fucking cardboard box. That that's pretty cute. Yeah, that's they have cute. they have some interesting like things, and then you have to make sure that when you equipped your weapons before the mission, your cardboard box matches the actual atmosphere. Because if you got like a cardboard box with like a desert patter on it, if you're in like a warehouse, that's not going to play too well. You got to get the warehouse you have cardboard box. Different patterns boxes to the cardboard boxes. Oh yes, they are very specific. Wow, that is high. I think I think that was really important, like the first couple games, because. They had different areas that would have different boxes in there. So if you were hiding underneath one box that had a different logo on it for that area, people would then find that suspicious and flip it over and see Snake kind of just like chilling there. Um, so you know they they do some goofy stuff in there, and they're, it's it's kind of comical. Um, but yeah, the R and D the R and D stuff's really cool. The recruiting stuff's really good. Getting the money, doing your loadout before every single mission. I like having um helicopters come in, like if I wanted to I can I can call helicopters in for air support or for like pickup so if I don't feel like taking this sickly POW, strapping a balloon on him and lifting him up, I can call in air support and like the helicopter will come in and I can put the, the POW on the actual helicopter to rescue him instead um, just like lots of different variety lots of different little things, the helicopter I call it in, I tell it where to land in the certain zones um, I can clear out anti-aircraft guns, so I, they can land closer. And there's a lot of little nuances in there that are wonderful. There is. Um, there's also a lot of things that you wouldn't really expect that is really cool that they added in this game. Like you can research a water pistol. You're like, what? A water pistol? That sounds stupid. But you can squirt the water pistol on electronics and break them, oh, which is great. Yeah. yeah. A guy's radioing. If you've got good aim. You can squirt his little radio. And, well, if, if, I had, if I had good aim, I would have knocked him out with a trank dart on the first try by hitting him in the head. So. Well, nobody's perfect. But, <laughs> but, I don't know. It's just cool little things like that, or if you, like, disrupt their supplies, they will not have those supplies, and it will actually make a difference. Like, if dudes are um, starting to wear a lot of helmets, you can disrupt their helmet delivery. <laughs> Steal their helmets. And guess what? There are people that don't have helmets, and you can continue to shoot them in the face, and no problem. Hmm. Well, so it's it interesting. Like... Also, it's like it feels like they thought of everything. Like you want to clear a minefield, okay? You can research that metal detector, and you can take forever, or you can just call in an airstrike on the minefield, and it hits all of them, and they all blow up, and hey, everything's done. Hmm. It's just you can think outside of the box to a certain and level. It's all it's based cool. off of things you research too. So if you're going more into the, the minefield style research, you might not have researched the airstrike. So that's like, okay, this is how I'm actually take care of it. This is what I'm actually gonna be thinking about. Interesting. So it's like it's like uh, player choice, attention to detail, and sometimes wacky, zany uh, story or cute, interesting yeah, approaches I, I, to. I think another thing that I really like about the series is that you don't have to kill a single person. You can literally knock everybody out and, and, and put them to sleep, including the bosses. You can actually do that with the bosses as well. Um, I don't know about in, in this game, Sonny. I don't know if I can put the bosses to sleep. Um, I don't, uh. fi Fire Dude doesn't look like he wants to go to sleep, just putting that out there. But um, in all the other games, you, you can actually just put the, you know, the enemies to sleep instead of actually killing them, which is really nice. Are you incentivized to keep them alive? 
in any way? I or think I think like, for this one, because that, that one mission I got caught by putting the person up in the balloon, my goal was to eliminate a Spetsnav officer, and I kind of wanted to stun him and then just recruit and like put him on the balloon and recruit him. Um, because it's like, well, he's an officer in the Spetsnav. That might be important to get information or put him, get him on ice, our side or anything like that. Um, so I think now there's a little bit more incentive in there. Um, in previous games, they give you... I, I think they typically gave you a little bit extra if you were able to stun them as opposed to um, kill them flat out. They usually drop a special item or something like that, if I recall correctly. Um, and you get a better ranking based off of... You know how stealthy you were, how many people you killed, how many alerts there were, those types of things. Rankings, rankings, oh, yes. man, based on points. I'm in. Good asshole. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but all in all, that sounds really interesting. Um, are you both gonna finish the game? Do you think? I I I will because it's Metal Gear Solid, and I I do want and because of. Hideo Kojima is no longer working with Konami. It's like this should be pretty much the end of the series. Um, you never know because I think Konami still owns the rights to it, but if they're making mobile games, it's probably going to be the actual end of the series, so I want to see how it culminates. At least it's nice because it makes the story come partially full circle because it completes the, the loop for Big Boss to go into the loop for Solid Snake. So, and Sonny gave a nod. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to play it. All right. All the way uh, to completion. Um, I'm kind of. I'm not. I wouldn't say I'm hooked, um, but I'm definitely enjoying it a lot. It's it's in for a much longer burn than all the other ones too, because all the all optional stuff you can do in it. Yeah. The only complaint I really have is that sometimes I want more story, and story is pretty scarce in this. And there's no good goddamn reason why they cast key for Sutherland. Like, I really well, they did that. Really did they start that with the fourth one, was it? Or was no. David, ha- David Hayter still in the fourth it, one? Yeah, this is the one. And he's almost a mute in this game, which is very weird compared to all the other Metal Gears where he delivered a ton of exposition. This is this is Big Boss, okay? This isn't Solid Snake, so it's a yeah, different it's person. Voice, though. Yeah. Um, oh, no, I, I know David Hayter was for all of them, but I don't... I don't know if Big Boss talked as much as Solid Snake did, but yeah, he does seem really quiet. It could be the fact that he has like this piece of shrapnel sticking out of his head, so maybe he doesn't talk all that much. Yeah, but, I was um, going to ask about that, because I guess I missed when he had something. I was like, why does he have one horn? This doesn't make any it's, sense. It's bec- uh, during the prologue that you probably fell asleep to, the doctor's going through all the... Um, the problems that happened, you know, the fact that he had to amputate an arm, and he also mentioned that there was like 180 pieces of foreign right, bodies. The x-rays, yeah. And that was one of the things. He couldn't remove uh, it because it was so close to all the other stuff that's happening around there. You look like a half demon. Yeah, he does. That way you can put a chicken head over it and he'll be okay, though. Well, now, well, now, chicken, chicken. Did, now, was chicken it just head. me, or in the prologue, when you're being guided through by the, the tutorial person. Was that also Keith or Sutherland talking? Uh, as um, Ishmael? Ishmael. Yeah, no, as Ishmael. Because that sounded like Keith or Sutherland to me. No, I well, don't believe so. Maybe it was Donald Sutherland. It was, one, it was a Sutherland. <laughs> I can tell you that much. Okay. So that confused me. I'm like, am I really Snake? Is this person Snake? Yeah. Who is Snake? You're, you're faking yourself out now. Yeah. <laughs> and then, then oh, after after, a, yeah. after the prologue, I'm like, okay, there's no way I am not this person. I was okay with that. but. All right. Um, yeah, interesting. That's Metal Gear Solid V Phantom Pain. Sounds good. Sounds uh, good. like a buy rather than rent. Yeah. yeah and well, you know, the real, the real thing that you should do is try Ground Zeroes. If you enjoy playing that, you will absolutely enjoy playing this. Like, it is very clear. If you they, like do do Zeroes, some, they do do some do some nasty things in Ground Zero with prisoners and torture, though, so... Correct, but from a gameplay perspective, if you enjoy it, you yeah. absolutely will love this. So even though we're saying, like, the great game, great gameplay and everything like that, they do do some nasty war stuff in here. Um, they don't make you do any of that stuff in general. It's usually the other people... You know, it's it's happening to your friends around you and those types of ideas, but there is some nastier sides of war uh, you'll see in this. Okay. Yep. Okay. Uh, yeah, Man, Middle cool Gear game. Solid Five. Yeah. I double dipped before it was even out. Talk about stupid. That's I. How is that possible? PC and 
PC and I bought it Xbox? on the phone. <laughs> okay. Hey, uh, which one are you playing it on? I'm, I'm playing, playing it on, on the Xbox. I'm playing on the Xbox yeah. as well. I do not believe my PC would be able to run this buttery smooth. I don't okay. know it if I can't learn it on my Xbox or my PlayStation 3. That's where all my talents be. Unless it's on booty. Burst. Or TV. Burst. Swag. Hey, sounds like both of you were partying hard this week. Sure were, but we didn't stop partying to be disappointed because the game Party Hard is a huge disappointment. What? Sonny mentioned this um, after we finished recording last week. Oh, yeah. Which, the show? Oh, he, yeah, I think it was after the show. It could have been at the very end of the show. Um, but he, it, it sounded great when he was describing it, right? It's It was a... It was a simplistic game in which all you're doing is trying to get some sleep and your neighbors are partying, so you have to do anything in your power to get them to stop. Um, and just from that little bit, that sounded awesome to me sounds and it sounded great. awesome to him. Yeah, uh, it sounds like, hey, uh, be conniving, figure out ways to get it shut down. That's great. Yeah, yeah. The game, unfortunately, made the decision for me on how every party must be shut down, and that's by running in and killing everybody. Whoa! Yeah, so that was kind of a bummer because that's not necessarily what I want to do. It's basically a psychosis simulator. <laughs> like, yeah, I've got it's, it's, it's in the same vein as Hotline Miami. Yeah, okay. there's, there's a lot of similarities, but like, there's no depth to it. Like. Except this is more of a... I, I don't really want to call it stealth, but it's more of a stealth slasher than Hotline Miami's where you just burst in and you try and kill everything. Right. Um, this is, you know, you have to try and kill people without them noticing, or else they'll call the cops, the cop will attempt to arrest you, but if you elude him for longer than five seconds, the cop says, oh, well, I don't feel like catching this killer, and he just goes off to his car and, and runs away. Um, so it's less of um, a stealth game and more of a patience game, because it's a matter of, okay, there's like 60 people at this party in this little-ass house. I have to kill all of them, so I'm going to stand over here in the secluded area, wait for a stray, Kill them, throw them in the dumpster, wait some long, wait some more, kill them, throw them in the dumpster. They do put elements in the game that sound like interesting ways for things to, for people to die. For instance, you can poison the food for the party, or you can um, like rig the oven to explode, or little things like that. But they really don't do enough to, to justify their use, and you'll well, you can still use them, but typically they only kill like five people out of, like, the hundred people that you actually have to kill. That's you're not still, enough. You're, so you're still going to be stuck in the, the corner waiting for people to come by, stabby, stabby, throw them in the dumpster, stabby, stabby, throw them in the dumpster. And it's disappointing to me because, one, when Sonny said that the premise sounded awesome, yeah. but, two, when you load it up, the art style is, is really cool because the game... 8-bit eight eight, eight style game. It, they do a lot more colors than what would be in a typical 8-bit game. Um, but, you know, pixel, pixel art, that type of thing. But the cut scenes in the beginning, they were still pixel art, but they were drawn in a way such that it kind of looked like a blurry camera scene. So it looked really, mm -hmm. really cool for what they were doing with your actual art style. And the, the whole um, story is like these people are, are interviewing a cop that's trying to f catch and follow this killer. Um, so it has like this really vibe, and then it gets into this really just mundane and just flat out sickening um, type of of gameplay, where I can understand like, oh, you know, we get them to stop partying. Well, let me sneak in here like Hitman style and rig the furnace to to smoke or something like that, and then they'll all leave the house. But yeah, unfortunately, oh. it's kind of hatred esque, where it's just like, oh, it's violence for violence's sake. I, yeah, I don't care. I just don't care mm -hmm. about this game anymore. So. Ultimately, the premise is far better than the execution, and I'm disappointed. And I'm, I'll be patiently waiting for a more uh, tactical version of this game that someone will hopefully make where I can ruin people's fun without murdering them. Yeah, I'm definitely in the same boat. Okay, wow, well, all hard. right. It really sucks and bums me out. But you uh, know, I could probably get a Steam refund. I don't know. <laughs> I might. <laughs> sure. Uh, oh, okay. So what have you been playing, HP? Forget HP's Pokemon. been playing that Toys to Life because there's another release this week. And hey! It was Toys to Life, everybody! 
Disney Infinity 3.0 edition came out on Sunday, actually. It came out on Sunday. Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. Uh, Sunday. Uh, I had mine delivered Monday. The 3.0 edition is the uh, Star Wars edition, uh, whereas 2.0 was Marvel. Marvel, and, right. Yeah, and the first one was the first one. Was um, as many Disney properties they can cram into it. Right, right? yes, uh, yeah. Um, so I guess it should be it should be noted, first of all, that there is more of a hub inside the toy box. So the, the toy box is there hey, you can put any character on here and you can build things and you can do whatever you want kind of thing. Um, and my my problem with the series up until now has been, you know, I want to go through the levels with whatever characters I want. Like, right. you know... This, like, this is a pretty common complaint in pretty much every Infinity game I've heard. Yes. You talk about and it. And it's just like, the main the main limited too. for no good yeah. goddamn. Because they right. already, they, everybody already expects the gameplay to be shitty, so nobody really complains about the gameplay unless you're like HP and you play, you compare it to Skylanders gameplay, which seems to be the gold standard for Toys to Life gameplay. Right now, it's the gold standard um, until the Lego game comes until, out. Yeah, Lego Dimensions comes out. Um, right. So it's so it's always who you can play with and where you can actually play with. Right. Them. Uh, so it it seems like in 3.0 they've made some steps to giving you a more directed. Uh, more kind of guided experience in the toy box. There's an area where you can basically have like a horde mode esque. It's just an infinite enemy kind of area. Um, so you can, and again, it's in the toy box, so you can play with whoever. But up until 3.0, the toy box has just been like basically an empty void of space. And it's like, hey, Put whatever you want to in here. So if you wanted to build a uh, you know an infinite spawning enemy area, and if you just wanted to fight with your dudes, then you would have to build it first. And um, at the very least, this time around, they've they've taken steps to okay, what do we want the core gameplay to be? So here's an area where you can go if you're just interested in platforming. They have like platforming challenges that you can go through with any of your characters and you level them up and whatever. Um, there's a like a racetrack area that you can bring any of the vehicles to um, and there's um, the kind of infinite spawning fighting challenge area. So, so it's already more of a video game than the other two uh, in that they are addressing concerns I had with you know, having this undirected, you know, oh, sure, you can play with whoever you want, but you have to figure out how you're going to create your own video game to do it. Um, now, what are you what are you hoping for in terms of the, the end game solution to, to being able to play with any character in anywhere? Do you want, like, a story crafted for regardless of what character I'm playing in this actual world? Or... What are you looking for specifically in that? Like, do you want, like, interactions where Captain Jack Sparrow meets Captain Hook and they make fun of each other for being pirates? Like, what are you <laughs> trying to expect out of um, there? Because there think, seems to be, like, too many permutations that kind of make that plausible, right? Yeah, I think you're right on. I, I think that it's too complicated to have this kind of dialogue specific to all the characters they're cramming in from all the different... Um, properties, uh, but... Like, even the LEGO games did, did a little bit of that, tongue-in-cheek through, like, an achievement, for instance, when um, Johnny Johnny Flame and Captain America met in the LEGO game, because they were played by the same... They were played yeah, by Chris the Evans. Same actor at some point, so they had sure. an achievement up for that. Little tongue-in-cheek things, but... I mean, that it seems like they, that's what most people want out of these, when they can play with, with any character anywhere, and it's not plausible... Right. So here's so here's the thing that uh, 3.0 has done, um, and part of it is part of it ticks me off, uh, but part of it is something I don't care about because I pre-ordered my game and I got it for free from Amazon. Um, they are selling what is called Toy Box Takeover, which is a separate thing. It's a separate little. Uh, 
you know, they're uh, the hex looking thing. Portals? Levels. No, it's a separate, like, level thing that you node? put on the portal. Yes, it's a separate node that you put okay. on the portal. Um, if not, I would have to get into the realm of um, very obscene and dirty. It's sure. Um, you put in the thing. Just like Disney. Right. Yeah, it's yeah. A so thing. so uh, Toy Box Takeover is a an additional Toy Box mode that they've created. It's it's a guided story where um, I think it's Syndrome, the bad guy from the Incredibles movie. Is that Syndrome? Okay. I I anyway, didn't <laughs> I didn't see that one. Sorry. Okay. Well, whatever. Uh, so one of the villains from one of the Disney movies takes the magic wand that you use to build things in the um, in the toy box and spawns a whole bunch of enemies in there. And he's like, if you want to get this back, come and get me. Um, so I played through that the first level uh, of the toy box takeover, and it was the Pirates of the Caribbean, uh, and you could play with whoever you wanted. So Chelsea and I played as... Ahsoka Tano from Star Wars and Captain America. Um, I and... wonder who was Captain America. <laughs> yeah, keep yeah, keep guessing. Um, but I'm assuming we it's able... the person wearing the shield. Yeah, right. Um, but we were able to go through a Pirates of the Caribbean themed level with a Star Wars character and a Marvel character. And that, to answer your question, I think that's my end game. You don't have to have specific dialogue to to address specific characters. I just want to be able to take whatever characters you just I want, want to play Captain America I just all want to the play time. Captain America every all the time. Level. Every single level. Why can't I do that? That's why, why you can't play Borderlands uh, pre sequel. That's, that's right. That's why I love Borderlands pre sequel so much because I can play as Captain America the whole time. Miss America. <laughs> Miss America. She can still be a captain. Yeah. Um, so, so that's... They are getting closer... They're getting frustratingly close with 3.0 to the experience that I want to have with this video game. Um, we, we actually spent quite a bit of time in the... Uh, it's, it's called the interior. You basically um, have an area of the toy box dedicated to building kind of a house from the inside out. Um, so you put rooms in, and you can decorate it however you want. And, you know... That probably is, ends up looking like a real fucked up house if you start with one room and you just start building around it. It's the yeah, spiral it's hallway the, around there. The, the, uh, the architecture is bad, um, but the, you know, going th from room to room and you know, Chelsea being able to decorate... Uh, Disney themed rooms and me being able to decorate the rooms based on like um, Guardians of the Galaxy or you know I've got a Captain America room that's cool we spent we spent a couple hours just hanging around in that thing they made it super easy um, you can buy toys with their in-game currency to put you know stuff on windows and carpets and it's I don't know it's far more directed than the toy box experience has ever been and it was easy enough that both of us were able to do it and have fun with it and so <laughs> 3.0 is one step real frustratingly close to the so it doesn't need a full upgrade you can go to like 3.1 if we want if, to if it we go would to 3.5 right. yeah if we go to even 3.5 that would be great um so I believe Ninja Theory worked on the um, the lightsaber gameplay, um, or or something. Ninja Theory is yeah. So so how is the the Star Wars part of it? So do you play a Star Wars character in a Star Wars themed thing, and there's interactions like a normal game, or how does? Because all I hear are complaints about the toy box mostly, but right. how about the stuff that they actually cater for this specific version? So um, so there are two. Star Wars themed playsets is what they're called. The, the little thing I was trying to think of before is is a playset. Phallus. Phallus. That's this. Um, anyway, there are two uh, Star Wars themed playsets. One of them is set during the Clone Wars TV show, and the other one is set 
like during the three movies that everybody knows about. Did you ever watch Clone Wars? I did actually. I, I like. Did you watch it. it all or some of it? Uh, I think we've seen all of it. We've seen all of it except for the movie that began the whole thing, <laughs> which I am currently literally halfway. Because they, they were all on. They should still all be on Netflix. On Netflix, right? yeah. yeah cause um, Netflix has I was just curious if I should try it sometime, but we're probably gonna have Star Wars Overload pretty soon. I mean, well, uh, we've got uh, the Force Clone Wars Friday's, is actually Clone is Wars is actually. Uh, much better than the prequel movies. It made me want to go back and watch the prequel movies, which is saying something, because those movies are terrible. <laughs> they are awful. Yeah. They are among the worst things ever committed to film. But you don't like you don't like Jar Jar Binks? <laughs> oh, he's man. just he's just trying to be free, man. He's just oh, trying to man. live his life. Yes, what other racial stereotypes can we cram into this one? <laughs> um so if you're a fan of that, uh, the the Clone Wars TV show, the the playset that they've created looks and feels a lot like that TV show. They got the same voice actors for Ahsoka and Obi Wan at the very least. I think they got the same guy who did Anakin. Um, I'm not sure, but um, all of that is is interesting and it's it's cool because um, in Previous games, you kind of use the X button to pick things up. That's pretty much all you use this one button for. You pick something up, and you can throw it, right? Uh, but they've added force power where you can grab or push um, kind of contextually sensitive to what you're doing. And um, it, it is a more satisfying gameplay experience than 2.0. Um, and part of that is... More than likely, my love for the uh, Star Wars franchise. Um, and you said the other playset is the original trilogy, four, five, six. Yeah, I, I think it's the difference between like Twilight of the Republic and like Rise of the Empire or something like that. They both have very similar names. And they are both sold separately, although one comes with the game itself. I thought you were trying to name the Star Wars movies. I'm like, what the no. fuck are you talking about? The play sets. The, the play sets, yes. They are similarly named just so to be confusing. Well, Rise um, of the Empire should probably be the Clone War. I, yeah, I believe, I believe it's Twilight of the Republic is one of them, and... I don't know. Oh, anyway, yeah, That's really hard to determine which one's Yes, which, yeah. it is. Oh, it's Rise Against the Empire is the oh, old... Oh, that would be the original trilogy then. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And Twilight of the Republic is the one that comes with the game itself. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's confusing. Did, uh, you buy, also, did, you, did you get both sets? No, because I bought the Inside Out play set because we loved the movie so much. Oh, that's uh, right, and Lewis Black's in it, yeah. Lewis Black, yes. So the playset itself comes with anger. Sonny, uh, don't give me that face. You can play anger yourself. Next next time, we'll tell them to cast you. Dude, I think Lewis Black did more voice work for this game because uh, he's definitely the voice of anger, and I don't think they pulled all of the lines from the movie. Some of it sounds original. Doesn't matter. Uh, that that playset is completely different it is a side-scrolling platformer where you collect things, and there's not a lot of combat. IMDb it is, very is clear that I do not, I would not enjoy it. it this, I mean, it's it's really uh, hit IMDb or miss. is saying that Lewis Black is an anger in Disney 3.0. So okay, yeah, it's definitely his know. voice, um, but I don't know if they anyway. Um, so. So what am I saying? What I'm saying is Disney best Infinity 3.0 game is the yeah, the best so far. Um, they are addressing some of the concerns I think a lot of people have with their game um, in a satisfying way. They are still charging way too much for everything that they do but it doesn't really matter because I have a feeling a lot of people are just buying these statues because they're they're kind of the highest quality of the... I think Amiibo are, are pretty high quality, but I, I think the Infinity statues are kind of the nicest looking 
of them. And if you're somebody who's that into Disney stuff, maybe you just spend fourteen dollars on a thing. I don't know. This cast is done pretty good. Freddie Prince Juniors in this game. He plays Kanan Jarrus, which is one of the Star Wars people from the animated show that. Oh, I watched, right? uh, yeah. So, so they have moved from the Clone Wars TV show to Star Wars Rebels, which I have not mm-hmm. seen. Yep. And I think some of the Star Wars Rebels characters are in this game, but they haven't released any of those um, figures yet, or any the playset associated with Rebels. They haven't released any info on that as far as I know. Um, You guys have let me talk a lot about a Toys to Life game, and I really appreciate it because I know it's hard because this stuff is kind of all the same, but we are are getting into the time of year when these games are all coming out. They're important for our consumers to make a a good choice. And we're all having children. Um, because so, we all the parents let them watch the PG version of the games only podcast, where there is <laughs> it sounds like a, it sounds like a it sounds like a techno remix where there's just beeps and bloops every. Um, every I hope period. I hope somebody's doing like a really bad voice, like like US like USA movies, right? Yeah. Where like, like, my name is Chuck, and father? I'm here to party. You know? Yeah, that's amazing. Uh, yeah, so, um, hey, if you, oh man, I don't know, I don't know who I can rec- recommend this to. If, if you've been disappointed with these games in the past, they're getting better. I think 3.1 or 3.5 or 4.0 might be yeah, eventually why are they the calling them with a .0 if they man, don't do any don't updates know. in between? That, I think they have... That's like think, going from the Xbox, the Xbox 360, to the Xbox One, man. They just want numbers that sound cool. That's what they want. I think they this painted one themselves... This miracle order. I think they painted themselves into a marketing corner by saying Disney Infinity had, like, infinite possibility that it, it's the game that they would just iterate on forever. So now they can't go, like, Disney Infinity 2... But I mean, if that's I don't the know. case, if that's the case, stop using natural numbers, which are countably infinite. Break off into some more values like rational numbers and real numbers that are uncountably <laughs> infinite, right? Disney <laughs> Infinity Radical Two, right? <laughs> Disney, we'll get... in, Disney Infinity Golden Ratio. You know, I'll get John Vignaki on the phone. We'll we'll get this all straightened out. Uh, so that's Disney Infinity 3.0. Thanks for letting me talk about it so much. Now, you've hey, been playing a real game this week, too, right? I have been playing a real game. I've been playing plenty of a real game. Uh, I've been real late to this Dragon Age Inquisition party, but I was able to pick it up from Gamefly used for, like, 8 or $9. I saw your created character. I'll pull it up on the screen in a bit. But oh, it looks nice. like he's got, like, a fake paste-on beard, which is dope. That, that's my, the only my, kind of beards they have. My goal when I make people in RPGs now that have these big character creators is make the weirdest looking dude or not even not even weird but the an atypical person so if you guys remember um, Dragon's Dogma where we had Leslie Cotton like something Leslie like that. Is the best. That, that old man saving people that's where it's at. I would vote for him I'm just saying. Vote for him anyway. for what? Like anything he runs anything for? Anything he's running for <laughs> you tell me I'm voting for, he gets my vote uh, so, yeah, uh, I'm going to say a whole bunch of stuff about Dragon Age Inquisition that you probably already know. Um, it's a... Video game? It's a video game. It's very deep. Um, I was I was recommended to go to the Dragon Age Keep before I started so that I could basically finalize what I would have done in Dragon Age 2, even though I didn't beat it. Uh, and I put it off for quite a while, uh, and then I was just like, well, I'll, I'll go through and, and check it out, see what it, it's all about. Hey, that's my face! It's a really bad beard. That's a perfect <laughs> beard. That is, beard is really the bad. the beautifulest beard. You look like, like a 16-year-old. I, I look like a man. A beard on his face. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a handsome You've gotta man. you got to give him some wrinkles and some scars and things like that, man. Nope, I'm a baby. Um, right, what was it? Oh, right. So, man, man uh, child, so I, went, yes. I went to the keep, and I, I ended up being surprised by how much of Dragon Age Origins I remembered, given that I played that, like, 
I don't know, eight years ago or whatever. Yeah, it was like nine years ago. Yeah. Um, so I was able to remember quite a few of those choices, but not really all of them. Um, and at some point, I stopped caring <laughs> when presented with the Dragon Age 2 choices. So it's just like, yep, that looks good. That Craziest looks good. sounding option. Thank yeah, you. Well, um, this character was just murdering and killing everybody. My... Um, my Dragon Age Origins character kept everyone alive if possible. So even like villains that maybe you should have killed, if there was an option to keep them alive, I did. So I tried to keep that going throughout. So like like Logan and other people like that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I tried to keep that going throughout as much as I could, because uh, I figured that would be the way the the heroes in my world treated. And, and anyway, I don't know. Anyway, um, I started playing as a warrior because I thought sword and shield would be the most fun. Um, but the more I played it, the more I realized, one, the other warriors in the game are kind of my favorite companions. Mm. Um, from a character perspective. From a character, yeah. They're the most interesting to me. That is and the hard like thing to... about these games, too. It's like you want a balanced party, so if you really like Iron Bull and you're a warrior, it's, there's really no reason to have him in your party then. Well, it's, so for a while I've been going one mage, one rogue, two warriors because I want I want Blackwell and I want Iron Bull and I want to talk with Cassandra. You know, like I like all of the warriors. Um, and I was reminded that in the original Dragon Age Origins I played as a rogue um, and man, I even though I've I've sunk in like twenty five hours, I'd really like to go back and start again as a rogue. They do give some nice options later on for specialization underneath the warrior, so you can okay. really get like um I think Iron Bull's a reaver, right? I think that's that's his his class. I haven't, he can, I haven't gotten that he can, far. He can really do some serious amounts of damage, um, as opposed to being you know um short sword and shield like uh, Cassandra is in general, so you can still do a good chunk of damage. It's not like even in the other Dragon Age games, it's like your other two-handed warrior or your sword and shield, and neither of them feel really compelling that you're doing stuff. You're it's it's more of a MMO style where you are controlling the aggro and you are taking all the damage, but you're it doesn't have that feel of. I'm actually winning this. You're more of a support role when you're actually doing that. Um, and the specializations really help that out, I feel. Okay. Um, in the sense that if you want to do more damage like a rogue would actually do, go Reaver when that's an actual possibility, and you mm. can really rack up the damage. You do more damage, the less health you have, and a few other options like that. So it, it, it's... Because it's, it, I typically play Warriors in this game as well, um, so that was that was nice to, to do that style. Um, obviously, if you want all three warriors in your party at the same time, you should have rolled as a mage, right? So, next next playthrough, right? No, I'm just gonna go four warriors. Let's do this. No healing, all aggro. Like I said, there are a decent amount because I think Cassandra's character is a hero in terms of their specialization. Iron Bull's a reaver, um, and I can't remember what Blackwell's specialization is. Um, no, no, um, that's right. Um, he's the hero. There's the Chevalier, which would be Cassandra, and then. Iron Bull's the Reaver, so they do have little interesting differences between them. But yeah, you really need a mage. You you need a mage on your actual team. Nope. There's, there's really no air heroes. Going you'll never you'll never die, but it'll take you forever to kill things. That's what's going. <laughs> and then the Can't second wait. that the second that dragon you want to kill starts to hover above the ground, have fun, buddy, trying <laughs> to get it. Hey, get down here. Yeah, this is, it's not uh, Diablo 3 where you're the Crusader and you can actually throw hammers at the thing infinitely. <laughs> um, yeah, but so I guess part of my uh, hesitance to get into Dragon Age, one is the, the length of time it takes for me specifically to play these games, not, notwithstanding how much it takes for a normal person to play these games. <laughs> Um, I think I put but, like sixty to eighty in it. Okay, so a hundred wouldn't be a hundred wouldn't be unheard of. 
Yeah, for me that would be eighty to a hundred. Yeah, believe. and I and I did do a lot of the extra stuff in there as well. Um, so so there's that, and there's the lore, which I I really don't care about, you guys. I'm so sorry. I want to pretend to care about it, but it's there's just, just too much of it, and it's overwhelming, and you don't care. It's, it's just it's like it's so good, it's bad, right? It's well, not like Mass Effect. It's like this name of this person at this place oh, at yeah. this time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and a lot of their lore is in written, um, written form as well, in codex and things like that. Yeah. I'm just like I'm not that into it. That and the main guy looks a little frumpy, don't you think? Like the main bad guy. <laughs> when you saw the main bad guy, you're like, seriously, this guy? That's him? Him? <laughs> he, he's, he's. Aren't you late to an AV club meeting? Um. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I don't know. Um, so, right. Well, why am I why am I mentioning this now? Not just because I I played it recently, but uh, I believe they just announced an, uh, another DLC for Dragon Age Inquisition. Um, Which I don't typically buy DLC. When I'm done with the game, I'm done with the game. I have enough other things to play that why go back. But I watched the trailer and it looks pretty good, man. Yeah, so I think a lot of people might be interested in picking this game up, and I just wanted to say, you know, as long as you start with the the Dragon Age keep and kind of put your choices in, or don't, whatever, just start with the default world if you don't care that much about the history. Um, but this game is cheap now, and you're going to get way more than your money's worth for playing through it, so... You know, this game plus the DLC, if you want to buy the one that's already out, which name escapes me, and the new one coming out. Yeah, the, um, the new one's supposed to be two years from the events of Inquisition, and it's all socio-political based in the sense that you have too much power now that war's not going on, and it sounds really interesting. That sounds neat, but my problem is that I haven't beaten it, and I don't really feel compelled to. Boo this man! Boo! Boo-hoo! Uh, me. <laughs> uh, well, so that that's the yeah you're fine, sweetheart. That's the other thing. Like, that's I actually feel a really like, good pun. I like that pun. That was good. Um, I feel like if I don't if I don't switch to a mage, I don't know or a rogue or something. I don't you're know if I can. Go. I don't know if I can keep like, playing. There's Drew there's as, hope in the reaver, but you have to have more diversity in your team if you're gonna stick as a warrior. I don't know, man. You know what you should do when you switch? Play as uh-huh. a dwarf, because dwarves are dope. Honestly, I think you should be a mage, because the mages in the game are the least interesting of all the characters. Uh, rogues, at least you get Varric. He's all right. Yeah, I, I think I rolled with Varric mostly. Um, no, you don't I, like Varric? I, I you don't like the idea of an unbearded dwarf? He's... To be, to be, to be <laughs> okay. honest... To yeah, be I honest, do like that idea. The, the dwarf that I rolled as... He had a fucking beard because the dwarves have to have beards. That makes That's sense. Why there's is only, so there's only he's yeah, there's person. only a few individuals of unbearded dwarves, so he can get away with that. And I don't want to kind of steal his thunder, you know. He's also really likable. You're really likable. He does. In a lot of the cutscenes, based off of the story, that the little optional like companion style cutscenes are funny, like like uh, the poker nights and stuff like that. Those are good ones. Oh, I haven't stuff. gotten to that. It's like it'll be like fifty hours in before you finally get around to that. Probably. I mean, okay. I'll tell you, if you end up shipping anyone together, um, you're in for a treat with this game because it gives you the fan service like all the way. So if there's someone in particular you like, you'll enjoy it. I am not a fan of what they do with Cassandra's character. If you even get mildly romantic with her, because it seems so odd, because she's so severe and serious. Um, it, she, she switches personalities. Yeah, it, it, it just doesn't seem right. So I'm not too thrilled about that, which is okay, though, because I didn't end up pursuing Cassandra, even though you would think that I would, hey. because she is severe. and. I still want to pursue what was Scout Harding, because I was a dwarf, she was a dwarf. Makes sense, right? <laughs> she was so nice, she would show up when I, I wanted to show up, and she'd be like, hey, job. there's some shit hanging out down here. She I'm like, oh, thank you job. so much. No, it was, more, the it, was, it was more than that to the to my my Inquisitor. It was more than that. You, you are the creepy <laughs> customer that goes into GameStop, and like, they always ask me what games I like. And it's like, 
Uh, no, so, I'm hey, so, hey, I listen, followed that no. path all the way down for the Inquisitor, and she's like, maybe after all this is done, we can do something, and then nothing happened. Let, let me ask oh. you one more question. Because I'm sure the devs did not want to program dwarf romance. I don't know why. You can do Iron Bull Quinari romance, I think, so why not dwarf romance? How, uh, how, how tall is Renee, Doc? Did my height. Okay. Do you consider yourself a dwarf? No. <laughs> okay. Maybe Just trying compared, to figure maybe, out some maybe, way. Maybe compared, no, it's, it's, it wasn't... It was, I, what, I, I've stopped role-playing myself in these games, right. and I, I may really have almost never done that. I think the last time I did that was Mass Effect 2, where I tried to make this ugly mug. Um, well, it's hard to be somebody else because it, you tend to forget, and when you know yourself, it's a lot easier yeah. to maintain your character. If I'm pretty you. sure Leslie Cotton is you. Yeah, you think so, right? Yeah. It's a good, good yeah. voiceover work, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, voice it could, right it could, it, it could be, right? Um, like uh, growing up and playing all these Super Nintendo RPGs, my brother Dan would always put his name for the lead. So it would always be instead of Chrono, it would be Dan, and I always pick the default name because I'm like, okay, the developers have these default names; they're there for a reason. They're trying to tell this story, and I think that mentality's progressed because those JRPGs. You're, you're really playing someone else's story as opposed to creating a character and going through like that. And that's really progressed into this. Um, I've had a more enjoyable time in these games. Instead of trying to play someone similar to myself, um, just playing it similar to an actual character. And I think I really started that with um, Kingdoms of Amalar, um, in which I said, you know what, fuck it, female, dark elf, rogue, and... It really opened up a lot of different things and a lot of different venues in the sense that I'm no longer pigeonholed into in terms of what I think and how I actually want to play. I'm making characters in the story. I'm making um, making something happen as opposed to p placing myself in this actual story. Um, so when you say, oh, am I into the whole dwarf type of thing? No, but my Inquisitor is. <laughs> I'm into the dwarf type of thing. I... I in all honesty, the, that Scout Harding is the most interesting female character I've come across in my mind. I'm so not she's got interested. A good, she's got a good backstory, you know? Well, I'm, I mean, I'm not interested in pursuing a relationship with any of the other female characters in the game. What's wrong with Cassandra? She's too severe for me, buddy. Well, maybe it if, can you, handle if the you find period. her favorite romance novel and you hear yeah. her... Buy her some, buy her some flowers, right? And and what about the uh, what about the diplomat lady? You don't like her? Too fancy? Vivian? Diplomat. Oh, no, I just the, uh, one in your. Um, she's not a party member. She's oh yeah, um, yeah the um yeah <laughs> the yeah, one yeah. that has the awesome the one, the one, the one, the one, with the built-in candle. <laughs> yeah, the one on your cabinet that has oh, those yeah. are those Joseph basically a backlit screen. I, I think Joseph. those used to be, I think those Joseph. used to be called laptops actually back in the day because there was wow. a desk that could fit on your lap. Yeah. Oh, so the desktop goes to your lap. Yeah. So yeah, that makes sense. Man, I, and perhaps in the Stone Age they had the tablets as well. <laughs> Oh my god! Oh my god. <laughs> no, like, oh like my no, god. no, no, Sonny. Literally, they were called laptops. <laughs> Seriously, they were called laptops. I like the tablets, though. That was good. <laughs> and it's all touch. It's yeah, all. It's all. It's, it was all touch back. You want to write right? something? You have to use your hands and probably a tool. Yeah. It's a stylus. Uh, yeah, I don't know where to go from here, but I guess it, uh, another, if another you... fifty hours. That's where you have right. to go. Oh well, yeah. Um, if if you're somebody who hasn't jumped in to this game, I don't think you have to play the other two games to jump into Inquisition. Um, you can go to the Dragon Age Keep and kind of poke around and see if, hey... I, 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 I like the fact that they've... Well, I shouldn't say this because they, they keep messing up, but they stopped numbering it, even though the first one was Origins and then the second one was 2, and now they finally stopped numbering it. Because I really think these games, you can jump into them without the backstory because they do enough to get you up to speed in the sense of the world. But like any other game that doesn't have a, a sequel or anything, they still have to get you up into speed in terms of how the world's actually set. So this one's no different. You just have the option in the keep to set it to certain ways you like. But if you never played a Dragon Age game before, that's okay. They'll just set the default story. The default story is not bad. And you won't know the difference because you didn't play a Dragon Age game before. You'll just assume that these are the breaks, right? 
These yeah. are the brains. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So I'm enjoying it, and yeah, I w- will see you guys in another 80 hours or whatever. <laughs> um, that's Dragon Age Inquisition. Sonny, do you yeah. want to tell me about either of these? Blue, I want to know what's Blues and Bullets. I know what blues. Grandia 2 Anniversary Edition is, but it's Blues and Bullets. Well, Grandia 2 Anniversary Edition, PC release of one of my favorite RPGs. Yeah. 15 bucks. I, I didn't know it came out on the PC. I'll probably buy it, even though I have the copy of the PS2 version on the other side of this wall right here. The PS2 version was actually the worst version of that game, which is crazy because it came out initially for the Dreamcast. Um, and you expect, you know, the PS2 would blow it away, but apparently they just made a bad port of it, which is weird. But, uh, yeah, it's totally dope on Steam, and I highly recommend it. Um, however, I do want to talk about Blues and Bullets. And wasn't, wasn't, wasn't Grady 2 your favorite RPG? Probably is. You did Fae 5. It was on the Yeah, it was on your list. I, it's, I, it's got the best battle system out of any RPG, period. period. I remember it because I was like, oh, I've never played that game before. It's pretty cool. Um, anywho. You're pretty cool. Blues and bullets. Blues um, and bullets. Strangely, I always want to call it bullets and blues because that makes more sense to me. There's something about that kind of cadence that makes it sound better than blues and bullets. It's an adventure game. Film Noiri. Ooh, oh, Noiri. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Actually, Film Noiri. <laughs> Noiri. Noiri, yeah. Um, it's basically Sin City. Everything's in black and white except some little dashes of red. Oh, boy. Okay. Uh, this game totally sucks so far. <laughs> Problem oh. is, you know how I had problems with L.A. Noir, where I was like, oh man, the story is just like, you know, lying to you, or they're, they're leaving things out, and you, HP, were the one who was like, actually, no, this is totally by the numbers, this is the way those stories are, and you educated my ass. You told me what's up with, like, this style of game. So It actually happens every week. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I'll take it. Don't ruin this. Yes? You're saying? You want, you, want, you want to soak this up some more? I'm you just always, joking. You always teach me, HP. So, um... You just call him Sensei from now on. <laughs> <laughs> this is a weird... He'll call you Grasshopper. <laughs> weird adventure reimagining of Elliot Ness and Al Capone. Huh. Yeah, it's really strange. It takes place in the 50s, which is also strange... Uh, after all that sort of thing, yeah. and you play as Elliot Ness, and it's an adventure game, and you're a detective, but you actually own a restaurant, so you're not really a detective right now. Is play it called it. Elliot's Mess? No. <laughs> you, but you, but you want to be a detective <laughs> at some point. So you're, you're like HP. He just plays. <laughs> I, I love how Elliot's mess works on like three levels. It's, <laughs> oh good God, that would be so <laughs> No, I think uh, it's just called Diner, which is really um, depressing. Ooh. But um, to be honest, so, it might just say Diner up front, but it might have a formal name well, once you true. get past the facade. Over where you live, Doc, isn't it where all of them have like these crazy names? Where we have, we have, we like, have. Let's see. Within my general area, we have the Ever Ready Diner. We have the Table Talk really, Diner. We have the Duchess Diner, we have the Acropolis Diner, we had the Arlington Diner. Um, there was a Denny's Diner at some point, but those aren't real diners. But I felt like throwing it out there because it does have the word diner in it. Um, uh, there's the red, there's the, there's there's the Red Line Diner as well. Um, so line? they, they usually line? have what was that? Loin or lion? Red line. Line. Oh darn. Yeah. Red line. Yeah. The bloodiest. Yeah. The, the, the red line. Here's some rare pork for you people. <laughs> Speaking of multiple levels, I still think the greatest male stripper name on the planet is Sir Loin because it works so many ways. Perfect. <laughs> Anyway, so this is an adventure game, um, and maybe it's just my unfamiliarity with the style of storytelling, but you've got, like, cover mechanics and shooting in some segments, and it it's, like, laughable to me when I play it. The story is stupid, and it's weird, hmm. and it doesn't... <sighs> the voice acting's not great. But, you know, that kind of thing happens a lot with these smaller games. It was five bucks for the first episode. I don't think I'm going to keep going, but I also didn't finish it. What's strange about this to me is that I went online to look around. I was like, am I crazy? Does this game actually just suck? Or do I just have no idea what I'm doing? And lots of praise for it out there. Okay. So your mileage may vary with this game. I'm not liking it. It, it might, be, be, might be for like the HP types that appreciate literary motif. It could be. 
Oh. It could be because I'm a um, I'm a peasant, you know. I've, I've what's a play? Is that something that children do? You know, <laughs> what would I know? So uh, might... I've seen I've seen a play before. I've seen Oklahoma. That's <laughs> that's a good one. Oh man, Isn't let's! It? I want to sing so bad right now, you so guys. Lie, and I know all the words, and I hate it. <laughs> it's it's kind of it's kind of like um if you live in Texas and you know the stars are bright, well whatever the actual phrase is, and they have to clap afterwards. Anytime I say the word Oklahoma, you start to sing in the song in your head every single time. Where the wind comes sweeping down the plain. Yeah, see, where just the like wind that. Wheat. It sure, it sure smells, smells sweet. sweet. Well, we can't do this. On, no. Right behind the no. Rain. It's your fault. We oh. pulled ourselves. This is the game's only podcast. We can't Love sing. It's like it's like fucking honey, honey, honey lemon and I sit alone and talk and, <laughs> and watch a hawk making lazy circles in the sky. You know we, we even lost this land. land. <laughs> we we even land. Okay, I'm done. See, I'm done. H- HP's not even singing. He's too giddy that he's just he's sing talking <laughs> it. So Sonny's say. actually selling this right now. You know? Yeah. Oh yeah. He's, it's coming right from the diaphragm. He's projecting. You're doing fine, Oklahoma. 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 Okay. L a h o m a. So, right, so we sang. So we sang that in my college choir, and when we got to spelling Oklahoma, <laughs> I like I had this like death stare, like out a million yard stare because I could not remember how to You're spell it. Visualizing oh, the word my. in the back of the auditorium. Yeah, we did it. We did it memorized. We didn't have it in front of us, so I had to go like, okay, L, O, M. Wait. Damn it! That's um, when you just start moving your mouth and hope that everybody else picks up your part, right? <laughs> that's why having Kermit on my hand really helped. <laughs> Did you anyway. actually have Kermit on your hand during your coral, your college <laughs> coral? I don't know. You're a goofy fuck. I, I wouldn't put it. I'd love to go shit. back in time and do that, uh, but I didn't. I wasn't that cool back then. So that is. <laughs> yeah, you could be the puppet guy that always has a puppet when he's. Oh my god! Around. There's that there's dude. always a puppet guy. Like the guy that always has the guitar when he's walking around. He's the guy that oh, always has man. the fucking Kermit the Frog. Kermit and the Frog on your arm. So Blues and Bullets, the episodic noir game. I'm not enjoying it, but it's one of those stories where it's just like, ooh, someone's kidnapping little girls. Ooh. Like, now, do you think you're not enjoying it because no. it's an adventure game and there have been so much progress in these styles of adventure games? I don't think it's necessarily the mechanics that are holding it back because it's everything else that bothers me about it. The voice acting is god-awful. In my eyes, maybe I'm just missing something cultural. Always possible. I am from Oklahoma. Hey, you never say that. You always say you're Where? from Pittsburgh. You've always said, I'm from Pittsburgh, man. I'm not from Pittsburgh. Oklahoma. But I grew up here, <laughs> so what can I say? Um, I might be missing something, but uh, the dialogue is absolutely terrible. And it's not even like the corny kind of like, oh, yeah, what do you say, guy? It's nothing like that. It's <laughs> hey. just like, it's just all bad to me. And To be I honest... Don't... I don't war, know if it's misunderstood or if it really is garbage. So this the, the war is a very cult thing. Not everybody likes it. I'm not even a huge fan of the actual. Um, we'll call it an art genre. form, right? Oh, I'm yeah. not a huge, a huge fan of it myself. Well, so it's, it's kind really of like, one of those things. You like it or you don't like it in that sense. Yeah, it's fun to perform. It's less fun to watch. Yeah. Why is it? Why is it so much more fun to perform? Because you can kind of ham it up or what? Yeah. Yeah, it's very it, it, melodramatic, right? Yeah, and you get dun dun you get dun, dun, dun in the to the audience, audience where you get and that to... that might be the problem that I've got with this is that it's supposed to be a little hammy and it's just like oh, that's right. You can take the 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 the, the sidewalk to the side of the stage, the spotlight yeah. goes on you, and you're just right. doing a monologue and breaking the fourth <laughs> wall. That's right. You I knew she was dangerous when she walked in. Yeah, mm. take a and drag a real gun. quick. <laughs> but I love her anyway. <laughs> <laughs> but I couldn't get her out of my thoughts. I went home that day and smoked a cigar. Fuck the um, shit out of her. <laughs> well, so, okay, it doesn't sound like you'll be playing Blues and Bullets anymore. I'm going to finish the episode because oh, okay. of what I read online with everybody else saying that it's fantastic and amazing, I'm thinking maybe I just don't get it or maybe it turns a corner. You know, there's bad bad beginnings at lots of different games. So it, The name of the game sounds cooler the faster you say it, too. Blues and Bullets. Blues, Blues, Blues. Blues. 
Like, but um, for five bucks to try it, I say HP, you should try it because I know Ooh, that's like me. Style of thing. It's probably also on his oh. family share because Sonny already bought it. I bought it on Ooh, the Xbox One. Never mind, Sonny did not think about you. I'll when family he share his Xbox One. There you go. We can actually do that if you want, but not tonight. Um, yeah, because it's connected because you did it digitally. It's connected to your game tag, right? Yeah, I mean that's fine. Like what I would do is I would give HP my login. Yeah. He would log in and authorize his Xbox as being his home console, and then for me to play anything, I'd have to be on Xbox Live. Like that's no big deal, but at the same time, if my internet's out. And I really want to play Metal Gear. God, I guess I'm out of luck, huh? Oh, that's one other thing about Metal Gear. All the online stuff is down right now due to server maintenance, right? And it's just Weird. the Xbox that is having the issues. Ooh. So the Metal Gear is Metal Gear Online out yet? No, it will no, not it's be. Not, it's, it's not even out yet. So, so the only thing right now is the sharing of the ratings and things like that, right? Ranks. Well, there's that, and if you did things in Ground Zeroes, that's true. There was that option for me, but I didn't do everything Ground Zeroes. I just played it for the story real quick. So, well. Uh, Blues and Bullets is only $5, so if it sounds like I might be wrong, I know, weird, uh, consider giving it a yeah, shot. HP, it will put it in your, HP will put you in his in your place, don't worry. I'll put it is you an, in my place. Yeah, I was about to say that. An adventure game with cover mechanics and shooting, which is very weird. It's not all quick time. It's strange. Well, anything can be an adventure, Sonny. <laughs> I mean, even, 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 like, even like The Walking Dead... <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm sorry. Even like The Walking Dead did have aiming. Yeah, and that was terrible. So, so was it, terrible. you know. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's it's a yeah. Yeah. Um, so I think that's that's it. Uh, do we have some questions that I'm not seeing? I don't you see know, anything on the tubes. We have one on Twitter. Tommy Capio says, what yep. old 16-bit games would make a good eSport? Uh, I'd say none of them. Fucking 16-bit games? Do you know what came out on the Super Nintendo? Oh, Bill like Van Beer's Combat Basketball, man. I was thinking like Madden 3 could be cool. Uh, the, the, the original Madden, the the one that didn't have a year associated with it, it's just like, if it's like Bumblebee yeah, soccer, that's pretty football. much what it is. John Madden football, um, yeah, half, half back called. toss left, and you can win the win everything. That's yeah, just win the doing game. That play. You, just, you play to win the game. Uh, but no, seriously, Bill Lambert's combat basketball. <laughs> I can't. I can't think of. Hmm. I mean, like some of the uh, speed running, some of those games it would be. Oh, you're thinking like the wizard, where but... you have to speed run, and that's your esport, yeah. right? Um, yeah. There's still, there's... I, mean, I was I was thinking about esports and how speed runs fall into that, and I think they certainly should be. Esport material because well it would it would be like it would be like bowling like running yeah it'd be, oh no yeah it would be like the Olympics compared to like yeah. football right in which you're just trying to break the record you're just doing yeah. it for the record mostly absolutely um, unless even though I mean if you're streaming and you get a lot of people to watch you will still get sponsorships and things like that as well so it, it is yeah that's that's a pretty good analogy to that um, in terms of the actual levels but Bill Lambert's Comet Basketball is good. Um, there were fighting games back then, too, in the 16-bit era, so like Street Fighter 2 Championship Edition, that was still something then. Um, Clay Fighters, Clay Fighters would be fun. Yeah. Like Clay Fighters, Killer Instinct was still then, Mortal Kombat's were still then. Um, so those are easy ones to, to, to put in that actual place. Um, I, I feel like the... Hmm, maybe this isn't the best, but I, I feel like NHL... Like ninety four, ninety five was as good as hockey NHL games PA, yeah. ever got. Like those were, those were a <laughs> lot of fun. They were easy to for people to pick up and play. Uh, Jeremy like Roenick would cut the head off of Wayne Gretzky every single yeah. time. Yes, right. You had a check that, button. That's all that mattered. Right. Check. Shoot. Yeah. Maybe the same deke, deke, button. Deke. No, Deke, now that's too many buttons. Dribble, yeah, dribble, I, I don't shoot, know about shoot. The, I don't know about that, but I would like to see speed runs be considered esports and actually have real big tournaments, not just, ooh, look what I managed to speed run. But it's, I want to see like groups of 12 people all sit down, start at the same time. They do, wins, they do do that for, for the, um, for the, the, good, the, the events, the like good, good games done quick. They do like... The, the, the most exciting ones are like four-way races for Super Metroid and things That's like great. that. 
but most of the speed running is for the record specifically and because it's not like you're you're running a, a race out there with everybody the the record is just built off of your time so a lot of speed running is the second you make a mistake you just reset and start again um so every yeah. single time, so it's, See, it's and that's, that's for, part for, for, for like me. that specific record, you know. I would love to make it so that you can only set the record while you're competing with others in a mm. live setting. Well, they they awesome. could have they would have like tournament times as opposed to at yeah. home. Yeah, that's just like you think about right. um, you know running at the Olympics. Yeah, that's great that while you were practicing at home, you broke the world record. Yeah, but if you can't do it in front of a group of people. Like I like that idea. Yeah. I'm weird. No, I I think that's interesting to have. Like this is this is the world record overall, but this is the record you know in in front of a live audience, or this is the record versus another speedrunner while well, doing a race, right? Yeah, I think some of the speedrunning people there's... do have a, a branch in which they just race against one another. I can't. I think that speeds. I think that speed runs live. There's also speed demos archive, which typically do the timed world record things. When you're sitting at home, just resetting every time you make a mistake until you get that perfect run in there. And then I want to say speed runs live is the site that you can race against friends and and other things like that during speed runs. Interesting. Interesting. Okay, we have a question from Joshua. What is your favorite traditional fighting game? As in, not Smash Brothers. Uh, no, thank thank the first Thanksgiving. I, I just... <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I, we just had our, our first um, club meeting at the school because I'm a club advisor for the, the gaming and anime society. Anime and gaming society because if you do gaming and anime, it's GAS as the acronym, so we flip it around. <laughs> um, just so it's not GAS as the actual acronym. Um, and, you know, somebody asked me, oh, do you play funny games? I'm like, yeah, but not Smash, because, you know, forget that game. And a lot of people in there <laughs> love Smash and play Smash. You know? Just say, Smash isn't a fighting game, it's a party game. No it way. is, it is a party game. Ooh, I mean, ooh, ooh, ooh. at high levels, you can really make it look like a fighting game, and I am impressed by watching it at high levels, but I, 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 I don't like Smash. I'm happy with the non-traditional. Um... I think I've always been a Street Fighter fan, or at least in the, in the Capcom vein of, of fighting games compared to... Because if you're looking at traditional way back in the 90s, you're looking at the Street Fighter, Capcom fighters, you're looking at Mortal Kombat, or you're looking at Killer Instinct. Those are the heavy hitters in the actual 90s that have persisted to this day. Um, so I think I was always a Street Fighter person. I really didn't get into it until maybe Alpha 3, though, which would probably be a non-traditional Street Fighter game. <laughs> but, you know, it's weird saying traditional fighting game. Um, yeah, I love but, Soul Calibur, but that probably wouldn't be a traditional fighter as well. Same yeah, thing with well, Tekken. Usually the 3D fighters fall outside that range. So What count, What constitutes... It's... Yeah. Unless okay. they spe specify it's hard, um, in a sense, when they say traditional. I don't I don't exactly know what they mean as well. I guess I'm... Um, the, Bushido yeah. Blade count, where it's, you know, samurai sure. warriors fighting one another, right? So. Sure, one hit kills. Um, yeah. I, I feel like, I guess, if those are the traditional fighting games, I'm probably a Mortal Kombat player, if, if anything. Um, I'm pretty bad at fighting games, you guys. What about, Shaq, what about Shaq Fu? Injustice, man. I you love Shaq Fu. Yeah, Injustice is a Mortal Kombat game, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. I would agree with you on that. Uh, King of Fighters 98. Oh, Thank that's you. right. There was King of Fighters in the 90s, and those were good, too, but that's also the traditional, the traditional style, too. Yeah. Best characters. All right, we got another question here. Uh, this is from i64x. Are you okay with episodic releases of games, or would you rather see the whole game done and released as a whole? I, I actually... Sonny's a big fan now, right, after Life is Strange? I, I have changed my tune. I, I used to say, well, I understand people wanting the whole thing to be out before they play it. But after, like, the anticipation that Life is Strange has brought, that's added a whole new dimension to being excited about a game and making it more significant it's, and interesting. It's I think so it's like better. watching your, your favorite TV show, like a drama on TV, and you have to wait a week for the next episode if you're watching something live. And that's kind of getting lost now with Netflix and binge-watching and all those types of things. But I remember when I was watching um, Game of Thrones, it was, you know, Sunday night, 10 o'clock, you know, for 10 weeks. 
And it was like, okay, now I have to wait a whole week until the next one actually happens. And that does something. It gives you anticipation. Let's just start thinking about what's going to happen next as opposed to it actually coming out and happening. Um, I'm happy that at this point there hasn't really been something... Because in my, in my eye, the reason why they started Episodic Gaming is so they can release the game and then you know, start tweaking all the other pieces. It's They're not quite finished yet, and they'll, they'll be finished as they actually proceed. And right now, that hasn't, like, fallen back on them. You know, they've always, all these episode games have been able to release a full story. I think it's going to be very big and a, a whole lot of backlash when, for instance, studio releases the first episode, maybe it's the second episode, but then they have to, they, they quit, there's a disagreement or something, and then all of a sudden the project's gone, and it's just hanging halfway finished, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. I think there's something to be said about the release. Of, like, both you guys were talking about this this sense of anticipation, but I feel like there's a sweet spot between anticipating something and having it be so far away from yeah. mm-hmm. whatever it is that you... Like, like you really liked Resident Evil Revelations too, because I was a week, 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 week. Yeah, right. Uh, and As maybe opposed to the two-month cycle, which is what most of the episodes are. And, and yeah, may, maybe a week is too quick because then, like you were saying, that doesn't give the developer time to finish. They have to be finished with it. Yeah, when they're doing when out. they're doing like a that week breakdown, it's just like. Yeah, the game's done. They just feel like releasing it in a different style. Right. That's what I thought with Resident Evil. But, like, Tales from the Borderland, I've really been anticipating, but i got to tell you, I almost didn't remember that the Episode 4 was coming because I had forgotten that's, about that's it. That's my problem. I do the same thing. Like, I played the first two episodes of Life is Strange, haven't touched it since because it's one of those things where it was so long ago when I played it and the anticipation has left, and then it's like, well, at this point, I haven't played the last two episodes. I'll just wait for the third one to come out. Um, for Wolf Among Us, right, when that last episode was coming out, I had to back play the last, the two previous ones within, like, a few days because I wanted to play it the, the day it actually came out to, to stay concurrent and talk about it on the show. Um, so it's it's one of those things where sometimes it's it's a it's a rush to get there at the end, simply because you might you might just forget about it, you know, or you might be on to, to something else at that point and you put that at the wayside. Uh, Sonny's good at remembering how great that game is or how awesome that story is that you actually want to continue, but it's one of those things where if it's not right in front of me, I I could forget about it, you know. You can tell me something at, at work, but unless you sent me an email about it and I can reference it, I'm not probably not going to reply to you. So anytime a student says, oh, hey, can you tell me this or tell me that, I say, email me, and then I will make sure to reply back to that email because I remember and I actually see that thing. You know, Unless it's hitting me in the face, sometimes I'll just, just push it off to the side. Don't push me off to the side. I will hit you in the face. Um, yeah. Use mess. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, I guess that I feel like that's a great question. Um, it, it is a good way for developers to get people excited about a game before the game's finished, without there being some kind of, you know, forced demo or something where you know they can give us a good chunk, a vertical slice, as they like to say in the biz, of what the game is going to be like. Um, because they can give you the first episode and then you can buy the season pass for the rest of it, and then they have the money and time to spend on it. But And that also uh, kind of might not work, too, because you're relying on the fact that, okay, people that buy the first episode will, one, buy everything, but two, start some word of mouth going around in terms of how great this game is. Right. And it's different from marketing for, like, Metal Gear, right? When people start word of mouth, they start buying it. But that game has already been finished, right? This is a matter of we need that word of mouth. That way we can keep on making this game. That way we can keep supporting the people that are giving us the word of mouth. And if they release the first episode and it stinks, right? Blues and bullets. Mm-hmm. First episode and it's not great whatsoever. And they were relying on that actual money to make it work they could have run into a problem. It's a lot like the the Kickstarters where they said, okay, here's the amount of money they need, but at some point they ran out and they're like, well, what the fuck do we do? Well, I guess we're gone. And they just 
have to disappear. Did sure. that happen recently to one of the really big Kickstarted games? I can't remember which one it was. Uh, the the one that was like Pokemon, the Moonrise or whatever it was. I heard isn't isn't coming out at all. Okay, that wasn't the one I'm thinking of. Okay. So I don't give a fuck about that. What? I was so excited. I knew you would be. Yeah. Yeah. I think it was a like a. It might have been like a privateer wing commander style game in space. I can't remember. Okay. They, they like they got a lot of money for it, and then they overstretched their actual bounds. Um, that almost happened with um, Broken Age, right? Broken wow. Age, Double Fine went through all that money because they were doing very high production values for the voice acting. So it's it's one of those things where it's it's very easy to do that, and it can happen episodic, I believe, as well. And there won't be as much of a backlash, I feel, compared to... Well, there still be. If somebody bought all five, five episodes, if they were promised five episodes for the full price and they don't actually get it, then there would be backlash in that, similar to Kickstarter. So, Sure. Uh, I, I think kind of to that point, I am very hesitant to try episode one of an episodic game if the other episodes aren't out, and I haven't heard anything from you guys about Hey, Blues and play. bullets. I mean, yeah. I, I have I have like, trust for the episodic games that land on the Xbox. They're a little bit more curated, you know. Um, Blues and bullets, I guess, is on the Xbox, right? Yes. So correct. I would have trust that all those episodes should probably be coming out. Is it oh, is certainly. it published by Microsoft Studios or? Uh, you know, I don't know. I didn't pay enough attention. Yeah. You, oh you'll... man, I had the page up and now I don't. Oh um, shucks! I have to type it again. Oh, I have to type it again. Um, so I guess point being developer a crowd of monsters oh yeah those guys well, you know. and who published it a crowd of monsters that's an actual developed, publisher developed and published by okay it's self published alright interesting yeah I don't, I don't know who they are yeah um, anyway um, yeah yeah I, I guess I'm not necessarily worried about the game not finishing. Like, I just don't want to start episode one of a game that I'm going to like and not have episode two come for months at a time. Like, I'd rather I'd rather two or three episodes be out before I start the game. Uh, that's what I did with Tales of the Borderland, actually. I was able to play the first three episodes... Uh, all at once, and I really enjoyed that. That got me far enough into the game that I'm looking forward to 4 and 5, but I, I think if I just play one episode and then have to stop for months at a time, I may not go back. Yeah, I think I, I, I did that with um, Wolf Among Us, for example, where it's like this first episode was really cool, ended on a cliffhanger, then you're just like, well, fuck. I don't know when the next episode's coming out. It's going to be a while. Same thing for Life is Strange. Like, this is really cool, but it's like, at least their schedule, I think, is a little bit more regulated. Telltale can bounce around based off of development cycles, so um, I think Don't Nod has been doing it every two months, right, Sonny? Like, pretty much to the date. Uh, it feels that way. Yeah. Um, oh my god, I can't wait for that last episode. Game of the year! <laughs> oh no, it's beating out Hearst, don't worry. And the second people start also agreeing with Sonny as the Game of the Year... The hipster yeah. in him is going to be like, nope, sorry, oh, blues, blues, blues and Bullets game of the year right here. It was an underappreciated classic. Yeah. <laughs> it's a cult favorite. Smart people who actually played the game will understand. Those that don't understand the, the film style of Nori will not be able to do anything, right? Huh. Uh, yeah, I'm curious. I, there's, a, there's a release trailer I'm going to probably watch. Blues and bullets. Yeah. No, I'm curious. Hey, I hey, want to you know, he, he had you at Noir. You know yeah, that. He yeah. had you at Noir. <laughs> um, any other questions, Sonny? Uh, yeah, I believe we got one more. We got time for we got time for one more question here. Let me. Okay. Next. They're just overfilling a mailbox. I didn't say our mailbox, okay? But they're overfilling a mailbox Somebody's out there. Somebody's mailbox is being yeah. overfull. With these questions. Well, uh, Brian asks, Poland. how can I break the I need to have this game on day one mentality? Do you have any advice, or do you still do it? Uh, I double dipped on Ground Zero, or on Peace Law, or Phantom <laughs> um, Pain before it was even out, so I don't think I'm a good... Uh, 
a good judge. I did buy Until Dawn as well and Mad Max, and they're in the mail. God. I do have a I hand of games. Dawn? Yeah. That looks like a fun game. ass game. That looks like a fun ass yeah, game. He better, I, he better stream that game and piss his pants on stream naturally. If he doesn't, you know, don't just forcibly piss yeah, your pants. Yeah, don't fake pee yeah. in your pants, don't honey. Fake pee. It's got to be real, okay? We know the difference between <laughs> fake pee and real pee. I in will pants. smell the difference. Yeah. Um, uh, right, so, I'm sorry. Yeah, I mean, oh, we right. all we yeah, all pre order games and we do all a lot of um, day one releases. There are some where I'm just like, I'll, I'll wait, I'll hold off to that, rent it, or do some other things. Um, yeah. the, the best way to, to not do it is just, fuck it, just don't get in the hype. You know, don't don't watch all the trailers and don't watch the the people on tw- on Twitch stream it beforehand. You know, when they they get release copies or play the beta or anything like that, and just wait for it to naturally happen. Um, I think now's a good time to break that actual habit because games get cheap really fucking quick. I mean, amazingly quick they get cheap. Um, it, uh, Tomb Raider's coming out. Right, Tomb Raider's coming out. I guarantee you, in a year, it'll be twenty, thirty dollars. Right? Yeah. Isn't the isn't the last Tomb Raider game going to be one of the games with gold this month? Like the second half of the month is yeah, the, exa- the exactly. Right, it can, it can do it'll that. Like um, Ground Ground Zeroes released for forty bucks, was it, Sonny? Or thirty bucks when it first came out? Ground then, Zeroes, like, I think that was twenty. Was it twenty? Okay, for twenty, it's not that bad. But still, like a year later, free games with gold, especially with oh yeah, the PSN and the games with gold. Um, I feel bad for in, in, I feel yes. bad for some indie developers because a lot of them have to give their game. I don't. I'm sure they get compensated for it, but they don't properly sell their game when it first comes out. Uh, PSN or Xbox One says, you know what, we're going to release the game. It's going to be free. Um, I just downloaded Dear God. Um, I guess I didn't talk about this week. I'll talk about it next week, um, which is the Xbox One games with gold this week, yeah. which is a brand new game that's free for the first time it's actually released. And it's like, you know, it's a very different cycle. In the Super Nintendo era, there was pretty much no such thing as used games. Um, unless you go out to a garage sale, there's really no store to haggle used games. Uh GameStop, or it was Electronics Boutique back then, um, they really started that out during the PlayStation 1 era. They still had some used SNES games, but, you know, 92, 93, there was no, no used game market. So everything was new. You had to go to the Toys R Us, grab the fucking ticket for the game, yeah. walk to the front, wait for some person to go into the mystery closet there to actually get your fucking copy of our type, you know? Yeah. Um, so it was it was a different atmosphere then, and the, the prices of those games didn't go down. It was pretty much, this is the price for the game, and this will always be the price for the game. Market value is not going to change. Um, now it's very flexible. Um, the, even the consoles have started doing, doing um, Steam sales, essentially. They started doing um, gold sales, right? So the everything fluctuates so often that there should be a good enough reason just based off of monetary value as to why not to buy games for day one release. Uh, and might I also su- suggest alternate ways of playing? Um, like, I have a Gamefly account. Um, sometimes I rent things from Redbox. They are, Redbox is now ha- it now has the next gen, the current gen uh, games it took a while to get PS4 and Xbox One games, but if you really have to play something, like try to figure out which games uh, are going to be short enough that maybe you can just rent them and send them back, or you know, pre-order the games that you absolutely have to have, and then be willing to wait to rent or be wait wait to. Uh, buy used or you know buy yeah. on sale. It, it, it all depends on your reasoning why you don't want to buy the game. The buy the game game for for day one. Right. If it's for monetary reasons, either I eat today or I buy the game. It should be a no brainer to just wait until it's dropped in price. Um, and there's lots of games that I've purchased now that I haven't really played. Um, and they've dropped significantly in price. So it's like, well, I just blew all that money. Um, in, in that type of area. If it's one of those things where it's like, I don't know if this game's going to be a stinker, you know, um, 
it, that's fine too. There's some games where day one is nice to have. You know, the Call of Duties, the Battlefields, those types of games. It's a different atmosphere when it, the game's first released, as long as the servers work, right? It's a different atmosphere yeah. when the game's first release um, than other things. You know, Dark Souls, when we were all in the chat room talking about different methods of going and where do I have to work with this and that collo that collaborative stuff. Fez, for instance, when Fez first came out, nobody knew shit. There's no walkthroughs, there's no guides or anything like that for a puzzle game, so you really had to think and, and, and work with the community to figure stuff out. Um, but games like Tomb Raider, there's, there's no reason unless you just want to play it at that date to get it day one. Um, games like Metal Gear Solid 5, for instance, blatantly there's no reason to play it, especially if you're doing it for the multiplayer, because the multiplayer isn't out yet. So uh, the story is still going to be the same a year from now. You know, they're not going to go in there and George Lucas the shit and make fucking Solid Snake shoot first or anything like that. It's not going to be whittled around like that. So for those single player driven games, um, wait. I mean, same thing for these episodic games, you know, when I burn out after the second episode and then catch back up, typically when the fifth episode comes out, the whole package is discounted when that happens. So it's yeah. like I could have saved myself some money. I would have had to play the first two episodes all the way through, but it, it would have been something, you know? So those little things, if it's monetary reasons, yeah, it's a no-brainer. If it's I don't want to miss out on the hype or I don't know if this game is good or bad, you can still wait a day. You know, wait a day until the reviews come out and then see how they are. Or if it's, it's really one of those hype games, sometimes you just can't avoid it if you want that day one experience. Skylander Superchargers? Hold off on that, dude. No, get day pump, one. Pump the brakes on that. Day one. I have to get that Dark Edition. Anyway... <laughs> Oh, Bless sorry. you. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. Now, now the big difference is my copy of Metal Gear Solid Five has this little bar over the top that says Day One Edition. Yeah, that's very important. Yeah, and it's I don't give a man. fuck. I don't give a fuck about you could use the FAL machine gun in this game or not. I don't fucking care. There's other guns that I can use that still kill people. So what the hell is the difference, right? This one's uh, exclusive. Gears of War, so. Golden Guns. Anyway, uh, <laughs> I think that'll do it for this week. Unless we've got uh, any other questions waiting. No, that was, that was a long fucking show. Okay. Well, that'll do it then for the Games Only Podcast, episode 198. We are so close to 200, we should do something special. It's sure. never, never going to come. It's never going to come. I'll see so. you next week for the last time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, yeah. Uh, um, any, 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 what, did, what did we do for episode 100? Was it a we retrospective? Went to, we, moved, we, went we went to video. video. We went to video, yeah. right? But did we still do a normal show where we talked about games? Yeah, we did. I mean, let's, I don't, let's I don't think... 200 to where we break the sixth dimension. Yeah, I mean, are we going to go fucking smell a vision or whatnot over here? We'll just do a rebroadcast of episode one. And we'll be like, oh, oh man. <laughs> <laughs> then send it back and, in and, time. And then, no, no, even, even better, because it was an audio version, right? HP can do a puppet recreation of episode one. <laughs> Sunny oh, puppet, man. Doc puppet, HP yep. in the middle, right? You're redoing the That's whole episode. Yeah, I don't need you guys. You could have you could have Sonny be like, well, the purpose of this podcast is to avoid things like talking about controls, saying buzzwords like visceral and stuff like that. That used to be on the top of our document. Is it still there? No, we got rid of that. We got rid of yeah. our mantra when we yeah. first started the show. This podcast has been visceral ever since. Yeah. It, it used to be like Sonny would like cringe the second I was like, you, you hit this button over here. I need still to get cringes. A new, you know, to be honest, I need to get a new Xbox One controller, though, because in, in, um, in Ground Zeroes and in Phantom Pain, there's a lot of holding the, sh the, 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 the bumpers, bumpers. The bumpers yeah. and... The, the default Xbox One's controller, you don't want to hold that bumper for all too long. So yeah, they're it's terrible. Hard to... Those, the bumpers are awful. So I've got to get that upgraded one. Word okay. on the street says that GameStop is going to have a limited edition white controller that looks really that looks slick. so amazing. It has the gold D-pad on it. I love um, it. I want to doesn't have the color back. buttons, but inside the buttons, it has the little color directions. Oh it looks my God, really I love slick. it. I love it. 
I and I might it. and I might buy a 3DS because they're getting they're bringing the new 3DS over to the states that has the Super Famicom buttons as well. So I might buy a 3DS. Do you know what Weird. Super Famicom is? HP. Yeah. It's, okay. Uh, yes. <laughs> I saw that but face and I'm just like, I can't I can't imagine what that would look like. They're I'll, colorful, colorful buttons. Your colorful buttons. Um. I'll look it up. You, you close the show out. Okay. Hey. Thanks for watching and or listening to the Games Only Podcast, episode 198. I'd like to thank all of you for your support over this almost 200 episodes worth. Uh, thank yeah, you so much. Wait until next week's almost 200 everything. Yeah. Al- al- almost 200 episodes. Almost closer to 200 than... Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, okay. You're sure. like, they're just colored buttons. They're just colored buttons. I'm it not... Means something. Yeah, buttons. Okay. Um, I'd like to thank my co-host, Dr. Gumar. Why, thank you. And Sunflower. Hey. I've been HP 1703. We will talk at you next week. This is my wave forever. Wave forever. I'm waving. Oh, that's right.